This week on Break It to Make It. We allow brands to run something like 20% off plus 20% to give to charity. If your, mm -hmm. your customers are already expecting some sort of discount, don't do the 40, 50, 60% off, but you could do 20% off plus 20% to give to charity. And we've seen better conversion on that and ultimately more dollars to your bottom line and happier customers and longer term customers with something like that. Welcome back to Break It To Make It, where we meet people who've thrown out the rule book, failed forwards, or taken the road less traveled to come out on top. It's Thanksgiving here in the United States, so you know what that means. We're gathering with friends, family, eating way too much food. We're celebrating what we're thankful for, and then we're buying lots of stuff. It's Black Friday, Cyber Monday, apparently there's Cyber Week now, whatever that is. It's here in the US, it's the biggest shopping season of the year. And I've even heard from people back in my home country of Australia that it's made its way all the way there. Everybody's doing it. Everyone's in it for a discount. So if you're a shopper, no doubt you love a bargain. And if you're an e-commerce company, you are probably stuck in this familiar cycle of seasonal discounts. And in fact, if you're doing this, you may have already made a deal with the devil. What if I told you that the data tells us that discounting only drives short-term benefits and that in the long term, your business could be stronger if you never offered percentage or dollar discounts? Right, right. Bear with me. It's a bit far-fetched, right? Because discounts tried and true. Everybody does it, don't they? Um, but it's tricky because firstly, it trains your audience to wait until you go on sale for them to buy from you. And worst of all, from a branding perspective, it could actually damage your brand. I've invited an expert along. And so to help us learn a little bit more about the data and to discover some business boosting alternatives to discounting, this week's guest is the answer to the question, what do you do if you get a, if you cross a Harvard business MBA wielding investment banker with a mathematics and economics whiz treasurer of a nonprofit? He's a big brain and big hearted New Yorker, a proud father and the CEO and founder of Gives, G-I-V-Z, the tool that helps you convert discounts into donations. Welcome to the show, Andrew Foreman. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Me too. Thank you so much and for joining us uh, around the Thanksgiving holiday time. Now, I opened the show with a bold statement, basically that discounts are bad for your brand. <laughs> <laughs> Do you it. agree? And what does the data tell us? Yeah. So I think for a long time, brands have been able to qualitatively feel the impact that discounts have on their brand, right? You, you give out this discount and, and people have equated it to the discount drug because you get a little bit of a taste, you drive a ton of sales, the moment you send out that email with a discount code in it, and then all of a sudden you come crashing down. And how do you get that high again? I don't know, you have to go back and do another discount. And and this is something that you see, JC Penny en ends up you know, being the poster child for this, going out of business because they're just giving away too many discounts, right? And people will just never, ever buy at full price. And so I think stopping discounts totally cold turkey, maybe we talk about how do we ease into it, right? How do we, how do we ease into this whole thing? But you, ultimately, you think about a brand that doesn't discount, you think about Apple, right? That's the, that's the gold standard. They never provide a discount. They just came out with their Black Friday deal, which was $250, you buy a new laptop, you get $250 in store credit to spend, right? And so it's still not a discount, right? They're never paying less for their MacBook Air or Pro or whatever it is because it's a high quality product and you, and you can never ever expect a discount from them. And so that's where you ultimately wanna be. But if you're somewhere in between right now, I think we can, we can still help you and talk about different, different ways to, to get there. But, but I started out with the qualitative piece, people have felt this, quantitatively speaking, we are seeing now, and, and since I'm now in this space for the past two years as a math major, just looking at the data, just looking at, okay, here's the cohort of people that came in from Black Friday sales where they, we did a 40 or 50% off sale. We had huge amount of you know dollars being spent on our site, but we take that cohort 
as a whole against everybody else, anybody else who didn't buy on that 40% off or 50% off offer. And you look at the next two years out and people are spending, the people that came in from 40 or 50% discounts, they're spending six or seven times, six or seven times, not like 20% less. They're spending six or seven times less than the people that came in anywhere else. And, and so if you look at stuff like that, you start to say, whoa, maybe I need to rethink my strategy. That's amazing. And one of the things that you said at the beginning that kind of stuck with me is that it's like a drug for the brand or for the e-commerce. What I also read is that it's a little bit like that for the shopper as well, that neuropsychologists say that getting a good deal can give us as shoppers a buzz, right? And that the okay. discounts ignite this fun fear thing um, where you fear that you might be missing out on a bargain, but then you get that this super excited swell that comes from the moment of purchase and it can be addictive, for, for people and that's part of this impulse purchase all that sort of stuff drives that short-term goal um, but is there a way to give our customers that same buzz without getting on the discount train yeah there there is which is what we've, we've stumbled on and we're excited about and and one thing to mention even on top of that which is hey what a deal used to be and what what did what did that buzz what generated that buzz in the past in the past it was always discounts 10 years ago 20 years ago it was a discount you're like oh i'm getting something i'm getting something that should be priced at a hundred dollars for 50 bucks this is a good deal i think shoppers have wisened up a bit right now it's like is that a good deal or am i just buying a cheap product and they say it's worth 100 but they're just really marking it up and they're and they're going to cut it down to 50 and i'm just buying a cheap a cheap product that I shouldn't expect to work as well. And maybe my expectations play into how I end up feeling about the product later on. And maybe that's why I spend six times less than I would if I just came in and, at a normal price point or at, a, at the retail price point. <clears throat> so that's, that's one piece. But yes, to answer your question, Fallon, in terms of how can we actually get that buzz for people now, especially the younger generations, give them money to give to a charity that they care about. That is what gives does. That's what our, our, you know, my baby, I guess now at this point does, uh, as we're talking about, uh, businesses here, but we end up allowing brands to run something. So this black Friday, cyber Monday, giving Tuesday coming up now, right? Because this is a new thing that, that is emerging in the United States where it's, you bought a bunch of stuff for yourself, now give back on Tuesday. And so brands are trying to highlight all the give back that they've done throughout the year on Tuesday of, of next week, which I guess after this comes out will be tomorrow. Um, mm -hmm. But we, uh, yeah, we allow brands to run something like 20% off plus 20% to give to charity. If mm -hmm. your customers are already expecting some sort of discount, don't do the 40, 50, 60% off, but you could do 20% off plus 20% to give to charity. And we've seen better conversion on that and ultimately more dollars to your bottom line and happier customers and longer term customers with something like that. That's amazing. And I want to take a little bit of a moment to uh, hit at your origin story for Gives because I, I don't know the story. I'm super interested. How did you come up with this idea. We love to celebrate people on this show who are zigging when everyone's zagging. I think this is definitely an example of this. How did you come up with the idea for Gives? Yeah, I wish I could say it was a straight line to exactly what I just described. Unfortunately, it was not, right? As, as you always are, are pivoting. So the first idea for the business, we ended up building a bunch of rails to be able to send money to any charity in America. And then we had two years of toiling at, at, a, at a separate business when a, a food brand and a handbag company both came to me and said, hey, I want to, I'm on this discount drug and I need to get off of it. And so I'd like to run Facebook A-B test ads, right? A test is here's sign up for our service today, get $50 off. B test, same exact ad, same exact creative, all the copies the same except the last sentence instead of get $50 off, get $50 to give to a charity of your choice. And we'll give them credit on your platform because we already had this platform built and we said, okay, great. Yes, let's try that. And so we tried that and we saw a 20% lift in conversion versus a discount. And so we were like, whoa, this is, can we replicate this, right? <laughs> this, this is just like a, a freak thing or, or is this actually repeatable? And so we went uh, to the handbag company who had also asked me about this and they ran an email A-B test 
used a specific coupon code for $40 off, sent that to half the people, used a separate coupon code for $40 to give to charity, sent that to the other half the people. The people, the half the people that got the $40 to give to charity, again, 18% better conversion. So not only are we talking about doing good versus not doing good, building your brand, people paying full price, but you're talking about better conversion, significantly better conversion on the first purchase as well, let alone the lifetime value of those customers two years later being 30, 40, you know, or 300, 400, 500 times, uh, you know, percent better, right? Three, four times better than, than, than those that, that had purchased on the discount. That is fascinating. Um, can you, this seems, I'm a very simple person. I look at the numbers, I'm like, this is good. It sort of seems like a bit of a home run, right? So if it's such a no brainer, why aren't more brands doing it? I that, feel like there's a catch. <laughs> it's a great, that's a great, great question. Uh, and, and I ask myself that question all the time. It actually gets me upset with myself and my marketing ability because everybody should be doing this. Right. Um, and so when I go back to, you know, the postmortems on, Hey, where did we, did we get to talk to somebody? First of all, getting that meeting is tough people. This is a new market. People do not understand that donations can drive sales like this. They, as soon as somebody, somebody could be listening to this right now. And if we paused it and they stopped and they went away and they said, I think he's doing like roundup stuff. I'm not really sure, right? <laughs> because the only thing they associate with donation driven marketing of any kind is like, hey, do you want to donate the, the extra 63 cents and round up your purchase to the nearest dollar and we'll give it to this one charity that you've never heard of? And that to me is not going to lift anything, right? If I went into CVS to buy toilet paper and I came out of CBS, as I'm checking out, they said, hey, do you want to donate an extra 63 cents? I'm like, man, I knew I should have just bought this on Amazon and they wouldn't annoy me and I could use Amazon Smile actually and that's fine. Um, but if instead I went into CVS to buy toilet paper and they said, hey, if you spend $50 today in CVS, I'll give you, CVS will give you $5 to give to whatever charity you want. Now all of a sudden you're like, oh, I need a million things in this CVS. I just hadn't thought about it. So I end up spending 75 bucks, but they give me $5 to give to whatever charity I want much better for CBS, much better experience for me. Now I have $5 to give to whatever charity I want. Maybe I give it to my friend's charity. And by the way, I tell my friend like, hey, you know, CBS is running this thing. You should probably go in there, spend 50 bucks and get the $5 and give it to your own charity. It's, it, it, it does, it is a no brainer, right? On, on that sense, but it's new and, and it's hard for people to wrap their heads around. And on top of that, they already have their Black Friday sales set up. And now it's like, okay, we got to get out in front of this in the, in the summer. We've talked a little bit before about, especially in younger audiences. And so I want to scratch on that a little bit. So we've talked about how this seems like a, you know, no brainer, home run, hurry up, what are you all waiting for type situation. But is it only for certain aud audience segments? Is there an ideal customer profile or is this all the people um, that it performs with? Yeah, I think that's also been a problem on my marketing side, right? The first thing you want to identify is like, who does this work for best, right? And, and as much as I would like to say, hey, here are the per like the first two case studies we had were luxury, high, higher end, higher price points, luxury brands. And so I was like, okay, that's my ideal customer, right? High end handbags, $400 handbags, and you know, food services that are delivering three meals a day directly to your door. Um, but then we got our first big break with H&M running their first initiative. And I was nervous <laughs> because I was like, this is not the high end audience that we have seen, but it is the younger generation. So let's see if this works. And saw so again, amazing results on the H&M side of things. And I was like, okay, where does this not work? So where we see it work really well, pet, health, uh, health and wellness, any sort of apparel, um, any really we've seen it work across the board which is sort of unfortunate for our you know uh you know in best customer profile if you will <laughs> um but but we're really seeing it work across the board and and as as you target both the younger generations and then the higher higher price items either one of those spaces really crush amazing is there anyone or any particular group that it doesn't seem to resonate with or maybe a different way to phrase it is have have been slower to adopt it maybe not as motivated so 
not particularly. What I will share is where we got crushed one time. We 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 did, and I always try to like keep it real with like, okay, we've we've outperformed discounts in so many places. There was one test that we did with a brand where they had a pop up on the front of their site that said, hey, you know, and and you're seeing this all over the place now. Ten percent off your first order, and ten percent off your first order is so such a trained initiative now that it's not as bad as the. 50% off on Black Friday or something like that, right? Like people are just so used to that 10% off their first order that you really can't mess with it. And we have one experience where we tried to mess with it and we got smoked. So we have to figure out like, okay, how is how do we how do we actually do that? But that's the one place people like don't mess with that first order pop up. Um, and, and I think that's just a bit of, you know, reality in the situation. It's so funny that you say that because now I'm interrogating my own behavior and I've definitely been socialized in that way. I will go to a website and I'll be clicking around and I spend extra time like clicking around in my cart and I don't buy the first time because I am expecting that I either get the pop-up and now it's the get the 10% off, give me your email address. I'm like, well, of course I will. And right. then they make me give them my mobile number. Yes. I'm less pleased about this because <laughs> now I'm unable to discern when I get actual text messages. It's just spam city in my, I miss texts from real actual humans because I just get spammed all the time um, <laughs> for all the discounts. But or they send you an email. Your cart is lonely. You'll get a discount. I've definitely been socialized that way. It's a long time since I knew what I wanted. I'm going to go there and I'm just going to buy it because I've been trained to do something else. I've been trained to wait for the discounts. And then I'm like, am I a mug? Because no. like, am I a total putz <laughs> because I'm just waiting and- um, Everybody's doing this. The everybody's cart, doing it. They charge you too much. Yeah. Don't pay full yeah. price. It's a ripoff. Um, well, I, I feel like the, the jig's up a little bit when you go shopping and all of the tags already have compare at, like right. here's the price and then compare at. I think they have that at Costco or something. Yeah. Yeah. I go there for all the, you know, the bulk products, more sources than a small family like ours could ever consume. <laughs> but like, <you> never, <laughs> like why? Um, so I have to go there for that. Um so you got crushed in that in that sign up, but I can see how that is. And as I'm learning from you today, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, we've all just been indoctrinated in this this way of doing things. I want to revisit one what gives does, but also as a part of a broader approach, right? So gives focuses really strongly on this charitable giving concept. But that's only one option in the realm of these discount alternatives, yeah. right? There are way more things that people could explore. Could you give us a few examples of discount alternatives? Yeah, absolutely. So, and just to real quick, aside from getting crushed on that one pop-up piece, I do have to at least say, hey, we were able to work with them in a variety of other ways, which was, hey, spend, you know, they they now have an evergreen banner on top of their site that says spend fifty dollars or more get five dollars to give to a charity of your choice and that has lifted their aov from 38 to 43 over the past 10 weeks and it's just sustained uh ever ever since then and so that's something that is still a huge win and and still something that you know you can you can take away from something like this in terms of other alternatives that you can use aside from you know donation incentives to, to get away from discounts, seeing a lot of gift with purchase stuff starting to come in. And that's what you're seeing with, with Apple where they're saying, you know, spend, um, you know, buy a new laptop, get $250 credit in our, to, to, to come spend more in our store. I like that one. Um, also seeing new, you just mentioned Costco, new, um, you know, paid membership programs. So even like a t-shirt company, uh, that says, hey, pay $20 a year, $19.99 a year, uh, and you're going to get 20, you know, either, again, you're going to get percentage off for the rest of time, or you're going to get bulk pricing, or whatever it is that you're going to do, or you're going to even get donation incentives. Um, but that type of stuff is starting to become really prevalent, and, and companies like Inveterate are starting to enable that Costco-esque 
you know, feeling where people are like, yes, I'm part of this brand's membership program. I I get first access to drops of new products and stuff like that um, for, for paying a relatively small amount, or if it's a higher end brand, maybe it's 20 bucks a month and not 20 bucks a year. Right. Um, and that you have, that you pay this uh, access kind of fee to, and, and it just brings people into your brand more. If you're paying somebody any amount of money to be a part of their membership program, you're going to shop there first versus any competitor. Absolutely. There's one thing that we haven't taken a dive into yet, but it's this concept of choice and discretion. So the one of the examples you gave was in like the roundup. I definitely do that. I go to the grocery store and they're like, do you want to round up for hmm. insert charity name right. here? And, you and can't always, remember, always, importantly, you yeah. can't remember the charity. Nobody, I've talked to thousands of people about this and they're like, I'm like, do you do it? They're like, yeah. Oh yeah, I do it. I do it. Initially they say they do it. And then about half of them come back and say like, actually I don't do it. But it, all of them, I asked them like, oh, what charity was it? And they're like, I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. I can't remember. In our local grocery store circles, uh, you know, it cycles through them. And I, for the, for the most part, I just can't remember it. And they even have signs. So yeah. the point of purchase advertising is in the toilet. Like I can never remember who it is. <laughs> but uh, when we had the opportunity to catch up before the show, I told you the story of a burger chain. I think it's called Grill in my home country of Australia. And years ago when I lived there, they did this amazing thing. Every time you buy a burger, they give you like three bottle caps, actual bottle caps, and you get to place them in these giant clear plastic piggy banks, essentially. And then every month they count up the bottle tops, tra uh, make it real money and send it to that particular charity. But there's something about that choice. And I think that's what Gives does as well. You, you've said multiple times to spend with the charity of your choice. What is it about that that makes it so powerful and memorable and makes it work? Yeah, giving people agency is a powerful thing. So when you say to somebody, hey, we're gonna, you buy this and we're gonna donate to this charity, that's one level, but that doesn't really form a bond between you and that and the person that's making the donation. You're like, hey, okay, maybe maybe you give them a little bit of points for being a good, a good brand. Maybe, most people are skeptical even on that, but they never hear about the money again. But with Gibbs, you get to see what the company stands for. So in this, in, in the bottle cap burger scenario that you just mentioned, those three charities would be the highlighted charities. So you go and you buy something on Black Friday, you get 20 bucks to give to a charity that you care about. You see the three charities that that brand cares about, but you can also use the search bar and donate to any charity in America. There's over 175,000 that you could type in and choose from. And now whether you, whether you know it for yourself or you just pick one of those three charities, but you saw that the brand really cares about me. I'm going to give to whatever I want to give to, and the brand's going to support that. That's exciting. Um, and so for me, that's that's the big differentiator on the give side of things, that ability to choose what you care about most. And, and not to mention on the back end now, the brand knows what you care about most, and it's linked to your email. And so come April, you're going to send a specific email to everybody that donated to environmental charities that, hey, it's Earth Month, right? Um, but maybe there's a whole host of other people that are care about other things that are happening that month. And you can target those people with different messaging. And it's all about personalization these days, ultimately growing lifetime value. I love that. Uh, one thing that we know about Gen Z is they keep receipts. And I mean, in terms of the social contract, I think totally. for a lot of time, um, millennials and stuff, you know, we'll do a good thing. And the company's like, you know, we're gonna, you know, save the bees or whatever. And we're like, yeah, yeah, good. And we'll give them a slow clap and everything. But we never come back and say, so how are the bees going, yeah, friend? Yeah. <laughs> How's that going? But I tell you what, the younger generation absolutely does. And so the other thing that I like about this concept is you can follow up with your audience and check back in with them and show them that you really have done what you said you were going to do. And I yep. think that's a really big thing for brands yep. today. They have got to show what they're actually doing because someone will come back yep. and hold them accountable. Totally. They it, when H and M when we when they ran their first initiative, it was around Pride Month, right? And they were saying they had actually run a Pride Month campaign the, the year prior. They had donated a million dollars to three different charities, right? And like 
this this part of like coming for the receipts drives me crazy because I'm like, that's a good thing, right? Like that should never be slammed. But in some way, Gen Z was like, hey, like, why did you choose those three charities? Why didn't you choose my charity and, and all this kind of stuff? And so mm -hmm. then they saw gifts and they were like, oh, like now we can just say, hey, we're going to donate a million bucks. You guys decide where it goes in the LGBTQ community and, and all the different charities that you all have maybe started or are a part of or volunteering at. And you are a loyal customer of ours. You spend 60 bucks with us. You get 10 bucks. Give it to whatever LGBTQ charity you want. And that's um, that's a win all around. Oh, I, I love that. And that's a nice way to to really handle what could potentially be quite a spicy situation. My oh. father has a saying, and I'm going to clean it up for the kids listening, <laughs> but it is good intentions are the mother of all F-ups. And I really feel like H&M might have been living in that zone, you know, on the internet where if you tell people oh. that you like grapes, then you absolutely must hate oranges and they will come for you with pitched forks and your children and your grandchildren. So I love that discretionary element. It's just really, I guess powerful is the only word that I can come up with it without it sounding too trite. And it feels like that really could be the the magic of it. And of course, you've talked about lots of the business benefits. So I'm going to walk, walk away today from our conversation going, wow, we've got to tell more people about this, more shoppers, more businesses, because it's a real opportunity to make a tangible difference in the lives of other people. Plus, you know, do good for our business as well, because we're all in the, you know, it's the uncomfortable truth of being in business. Why are we in business, Andrew? Because we're trying to make money. And so the wheel, it turns. And I like that we're not, um, you know, shying away from that either. Like if you go to your website, you see all of the facts around how this is going to help you drive your bottom line, your long-term brand equity, all of those sorts of things. It's just amazing. And um, you can probably hear how excited I am about it because it's just such a, an interesting concept. And part of me is like embarrassed for just the world that no one came up with this sooner. But I'm also <laughs> so excited um, that like I know the guy who did. And so I feel, you know, fancy now um so we're we've reached uh, our time today i could talk to you for hours and so before we leave i want to go to the final question which is we like to leave all of our listeners with a a final thought and so for all of the people who you have no doubt inspired today and who are busily taking notes what is the one thing that you hope that they take away from today the one thing i think the one thing to take away here is evaluate your discount plan to date you know what have you been doing on the discount side of things what do you plan to do going forward and just please try to take a look at the alternatives to discounting whether they're donation incentives with gives whether they're free gifts with purchase whether they're paid membership programs or whether they're some combination of loyalty programs and everything in between just take a look at it at, take a look at it think hard about it look at the revenue that you are losing straight off the bat from discounts because a lot of people just don't feel that they're like hey here's my revenue it's like what could it have been if you weren't discounting right you have to take a take a look into that uh, and then ultimately feel free to reach out anytime uh, you want to talk about any of this stuff uh, again it's gibz.com and you can find me there that's amazing thank you so much andrew everybody it is never too late to start making better choices. Thank you for choosing to spend your time with us here today on Break It To Make You. Andrew, you've been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for sharing your big brain and great ideas with us. Very excited for Gives and to see what you do with this amazing company. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure talking with you as well uh, and excited for uh, this to be shared with the world. Awesome. Remember tomorrow from the time that you're listening to this, it will be Giving Tuesday. So take that opportunity to put your money where your heart is. If you'd like to learn more about gifts, head over to www.givz.com. Yes, I'm showing my age. I literally just said www. <laughs> um, thank you again, Andrew. And thank you to all of you who choose to spend your time with us every single Monday. Happy Thanksgiving, happy holidays to you and your families, and we'll see you next week.